everyone. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to the Back to Space August Rewind. We're gonna review all the major news that happened this month. And this month, there was some exciting stuff. We're talking meteor showers, UFO task forces, and many, many launches. So let's start at the beginning of the month. On August 1st, the SpaceX Crew Dragon departed the International Space Station and headed back to Earth. The following day, Bob and Doug splashed down and returned to this beautiful planet. Guys, this was a huge deal. It was historic. It was the first crew launch to depart from the United States since the final flight of the space shuttle fleet in July of 2011. In addition, it was a great representation of commercial flight working hand in hand with NASA. I don't know about you guys, but I watched this live and I was hyperventilating the entire time. It was so fun to see history in the making. So, you might wonder what's next. In late September, NASA astronauts Michael Hopkins, Victor Glover, and Shannon Walker, and Japanese astronaut Soichi Noguchi will head to the ISS for a six month relaxing stay. You know what? I kind of want to be on that flight. I'd love to get off Earth for six months. Am I right? Also, another historic moment. Obama and Trump both said great job to SpaceX. That is the one time in history they've ever agreed with one another. This is random but fun. Super Space Sunblock was made from skin pigment and it could protect astronauts from radiation. I feel like I need this right now, like on Earth. I get sunburned everywhere I go. I hope that they will be selling this on Amazon.com. On August 3rd, Virgin Galactic and Rolls-Royce teamed up to create a supersonic jet for high-speed passenger flights. The Spaceship Company, that's literally the name, the Spaceship Company, which is Virgin Galactic's aerospace system manufacturing arm that builds the company's spaceship to space planes, is now working to develop a high-speed commercial aircraft capable of flying at Mach 3, aka three times the speed of sound. So here's the new news. They announced the completion of a mission concept review and unveiled the initial design concept for a high-speed aircraft. TSC, the spaceship company, hopes that their vehicle will be a Mach 3 certified aircraft with delta-shaped wings able to see between 9 and 19 passengers at a time and fly at an altitude above 60,000 feet. 18,300 meters. The company also aims to have a variety of seating options, including business and first class. What a world we live in. The high speed craft would take off and land like any other passenger aircraft and be expected to integrate into existing airport infrastructures and international airspaces around the world. This is great, but does anyone feel like Virgin Galactic is doing a lot of unveiling, but not a lot of flying? Huh? Interesting. We have an anniversary in the house. Happy Mars anniversary to the Curiosity NASA rover. It has been up there for eight years. I worked on this when I was a mere intern, and this Mars anniversary makes me feel very old. Look, it looks like it hasn't aged a day. Good for you, Curiosity. On August 7th, SpaceX successfully launched dozens of Starlink satellites and two small Earth imaging satellites into orbit. This is the second of what is expected to be a series of Starlink ride share missions. I saw this headline and I had to report it immediately. This headline, quote, is this thing on? Poop stains visible from space reveal hidden colonies of Antarctic penguins. Guys, this is so funny. This new imagery revealed this stain means that there are nearly 20% more emperor penguin colonies in Antarctica than previously thought. It's kind of like Atlantis, but with penguins. Is there a better sales pitch? I think not. A spacecraft is coming together ahead of its planned launch day? Said no one ever besides the Russians. Russia's Luna 25 spacecraft is expected to launch in October of 2021. The Russian lunar landing vehicle includes nine instruments, eight Russian, and one developed by the ESA. These are meant to research the composition, structure, and physical mechanic properties of the lunar polar regolith, dust, and plasma exosphere around the moon's pole. No one in the history of ever has been to this region, which is why it is eyed by so many nations as a site for future moon bases. Speaking of Russia, on August 11th, Russia named its first COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik V. 
After the world's first satellite called Sputnik launched by the Soviet Union on October 4, 1957. This name signifies the country's success in being the first to have a vaccine approved, so says the Russian government. But of course, it has to go through all of the testing and such, so let's not get too excited there, shall we, Russia? Do you remember when I reported about Beetlejuice's odd dimming? Well, there's some new news on that front. Apparently, this was caused by a huge cloud of material that the supergiant star blasted into space. This originally happened in 2019. We thought that the star's demise may be imminent, even weeks. We planned the funeral, but it didn't happen. And Beetlejuice powered through the dimming episode and went back to shining bright like a diamond. So they were kind of like, WTF is going on here. Some people were saying the doldrums to light blocking dust caused it. And others thought it was a big sunspot on its surface, kind of like freckles. Kind of a cute image. Then some researchers studied the star and using NASA's Hubble telescope revealed a huge amount of materials moving from Betelgeuse's surface to its outer atmosphere at tremendous speed. Betelgeuse lost about twice as much material to space from its southern hemisphere as it normally does. So that is the gossip about our friend Betelgeuse. I was waiting the entire episode to talk about this. The Perseid meteor shower. This is of course the most famous annual shooting star display. It's considered the best meteor shower according to TripAdvisor and Yelp. It has usually about 50 to 75 meteors per hour, but this year it was a little bit less and that was due to the first quarter moon and it stole its light. <laughs> Get it because there was a lack of light. The shower was active for about five weeks, but reached its peak activity around August 12th. I'm also super excited to talk about this, the Pentagon's new UFO task force. What is it? We have questions. A little background, three videos showing US Navy pilots encountering mysterious fast moving objects emerged in 2019 and 2018. These were made public due to the reporting by the New York Times. One of these videos was taken in 2004 and the other was taken in 2015 and they are Odd, to say the least. In mid-August, the U.S. Department of Defense announced the creation of a task force to analyze and understand the nature and origins of UAPs. Oh. Guys, what follows is very confusing, so stay, stay with me. The Department of Navy, under the cognizance of the Office of the Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security, will lead the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, the UAPTF. The mission of the UAPTF is, quote, to detect, analyze, and catalog UAPs that could potentially pose a threat to US national security. This was released on August 14th, and I can't wait for this. I do remember watching that documentary known as Men in Black, and I feel like that may have been a little before its time. Moving on. A Japanese company that hopes to land people on the moon one day has unveiled the final designs of its first robotic lunar lander, which will launch in 2022 on a SpaceX rocket. The Tokyo-based company is named iSpace. They revealed the Hakuto Reboot, Hakuto R, in July, stating that it's slated to touch down on the moon in 2022, years later than its previous target. Now, there were unspecified technical issues that held up construction, so it's pushed even later. Also, later in August, the company raised $28 million in new funding, so guys, don't worry, they're fine. NASA has a helicopter on Mars? What was that? Yes, NASA's Mars helicopter named Ingenuity successfully powered up for the first time in space. It is the first helicopter designed to fly on another planet, and it's currently on its way to the red planet aboard NASA's Mars 2020 Perseverance rover, which was launched on July 30th. It is scheduled to land on Mars on February 18th, 2021. Some point after that, not sure why this is vague, but the Ingenuity will detach from the rover and head down to the planet's surface and take a few pioneering first flights. If all goes well, the Ingenuity will prove that robotic flight is possible on Mars opening the door to so many other possibilities. Guys, a car-sized asteroid made the closest Earth flyby a space rock has ever survived. On August 16th, the asteroid initially labeled Z, T, F, zero, D, lowercase x, uppercase Q, and now formally known to astronomers as 2020 QC. It did a quick flyby at 1,830 miles, giving it the title of the closest asteroid flyby ever recovered that didn't end with the rocks 
demise. Not only did we have a Mars anniversary celebration, but there was also a death and it was fiery. It was the fiery end for a Japanese cargo spacecraft. The Japanese White Stork has taken flight from the ISS for the last time. <laughs> JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's ninth H-11 transfer vehicle, or HTV-9, was released from its temporary perch at the end of the space station arm on Tuesday, August 18th. It spent two days in orbit before flight controllers in Japan commanded an engine burn that sent the spacecraft plunging back into Earth's atmosphere. It was loaded with about 7,400 pounds of used equipment and trash from the space station. On August 20th, the FCC approved Amazon's Kuiper Satellite Constellations. As we've been talking about SpaceX, they have been sending hundreds of Starlink satellites up into space. And then Jeff B was like, yo, I need to get on that shit. So this month it was approved. Quote, we conclude that the grant of Kuiper's application would advance the public interest by authorizing a system designed to increase the availability of high-speed broadband services to consumers, government, and business. The FCC said. As a side note, this came after the coronavirus pandemic and Jeff B was trying to make it sound like he was doing this for the people. He was like, guys, I have heard stories about people unable to do their work because of bad connection. So he was like, you know what? I am going to fix that. But we all know it's for the money. It's okay. Go on, Jeff, get your money. NASA found an air leak on the International Space Station. But NASA was like, guys, it's okay, remain calm. No one is in immediate danger. The leak was first spotted in September of 2019, but it did not interfere with the normal operations. And also the air loss acceleration rate wasn't high enough to cause alarm. NASA basically said, um, guys, with like the demo and the spacewalk to repair the broken dark matter detector, humble brag, it's just like, we've been so busy. Um, since all of those are now complete, they have time to deal with the issue. Back to Blue Origin. News from August 20th. In late April, NASA announced that it had awarded funding to three commercial groups. These winners were SpaceX, Dianetics, and the Blue Origin National Team to develop human landing systems for the agency's Artemis Lunar Program. And if you don't know, NASA is pressuring them hardcore because they want all of this done and astronauts near the moon's south pole in 2024. The new news, the Blue Origin National Team delivered a mock-up moon lander to NASA for some tests. This is a big step toward making this mission a reality. So let's get it going, NASA. So we have another Lunaversary. If that's not a thing, I'm going to make it one. On August 21st, India's Chandrayaan-2 moon mission hit its first year mark in lunar orbit. I feel like I was just reporting that yesterday. <laughs> this is news. An asteroid will indeed not hit the Earth the day before Election Day. Dang it. You know, I hadn't heard that rumor, but I am sad that it is not true. Someone got some cash money, an early space shuttle mock-up that was used in the test of NASA's ground facilities before becoming a part of the landmark public display, has qualified as an American treasure worthy of preservation and a half a million dollar federal grant. This was announced by the National Park Service on Thursday, August 20th. So fear not, it will stick around for a while and possibly be involved in a Nicolas Cage movie. On the 25th, NASA added a third astronaut to the crew prepping to fly aboard the first operational mission of the Boeing Starliner capsule to the ISS. This is the rookie, Jeanette Epps. The mission departure date will depend on the progress of the vehicle certification process. Then on the 28th, the company announced that it will launch its uncrewed test flight of the CTS Starliner spacecraft no earlier than December. This will be the follow-up to a partial failure that prevented the Starliner spacecraft from reaching the station during the OFT-1 mission in September, 2019. I shall keep you updated on that one. Quick one here. NASA delayed their new astronaut selection due to the coronavirus constraints. That explains why I have yet to receive a call from NASA telling me that I am their first draft pick. NASA, I am waiting and I agree. And for the last article, this was filmed on the 29th, the launch of the new US spy satellite on a massive Delta IV heavy rocket has been delayed at least a week after the last minute abort prevented an attempt of a liftoff early on the 29th. The abort occurred just three seconds, three seconds before the planned launch of the clandestine 
NROL44 from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. So we're gonna have to report on how that went next month, unless it's a secret as well. And let's not forget about the famous giveaway. Remember this? This, this was made by the famous Tim Gagnon. And in order to win this, you guys had to make a comment, preferably a nice one about the channel. I'm impressed by the backdrop. So let's see, this is gonna look great on the back of a, I feel like this goes on a bomber jacket. That's why I would wear it on. So it goes to Davin Reynolds. You won, congratulations. Davin, make sure you send an email to info at backtospace.com to claim your prize. This week we are giving away a t-shirt like this in the size of your choosing. So go ahead, leave a comment. Thanks guys, I hope you're enjoying this. The comments were super positive. Let's keep it going. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope to see you next month, you know, with UFOs and meteor showers. I can't wait to see what next month presents. Leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you early next month.